Have you ever felt cursed? Like my life is cursed and nothing is working out. Everything is falling apart. I was sitting with a gentleman just this morning and they told me exactly this. They just feel that their life is cursed. That's how uh, so many things are continuously faltering in their life that there must be a curse upon them. And I've heard this from other people in the past as well. Well, I'd like to tell you a story about a family that actually felt that they were cursed and the way they were guided to get out of this spell that they perceived they were under, which was not in fact the case. Uh, this was a wealthy couple that lived in Brazil. And this story takes us to the early 1970s. And they tried having children. She had one miscarriage. She, she had a second miscarriage. She wasn't able to have a child. And there is, there is a very noted uh, Chabad rabbi of blessed memory, who is known as Rabbi Yosef Weinberg, or Rabbi, uh, known as Rabbi Yossel Weinberg, um, who would travel around the world and got to know many different people throughout the world who he would connect to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Um, and when he was in Brazil next, they discussed, this couple discussed with him their issue, their challenge of having children. And uh, Rabbi Weinberg said that he's going to uh, you know, approach the Rebbe and ask the Rebbe for a blessing on their behalf. And the Rebbe, in fact, extended a blessing through Rabbi Weinberg for them to have children. And the Rebbe's message, and then which the Rebbe then followed up with an actual letter that he sent to the missus, um, or for extending a blessing to her to be blessed with children, and added that in order to uh, experience this blessing, they should observe the laws of family purity, otherwise known in Hebrew as Taras Hamashpacha, which are the laws that a husband and wife um, observe according to Torah law, where um, a woman, after a certain, a certain number of days, goes to the mikveh, immerses in the mikveh, and that is the greatest merit one can create for themselves to have a child, because that is living as a couple and having one's intimacy following the guidelines of Almighty God. And so that's, that's, uh, that was the conveyed message. So they, they studied the laws of a family purity. They were observing them. She became pregnant. And tragically, in November of 1973, she miscarried again. She was really devastated. She was broken. And she, um, and she um, ex expressed to Robert Weinberg, how can it be? that after the Rebbe gave me a blessing, that I still miscarried. Why didn't, what happened to the blessing? Why wasn't I blessed with a child as I was uh, promised? That was their question. And Rabbi Weinberg wrote this question to the Rebbe. And the Rebbe responded to Rabbi Weinberg's question by making some notes on the actual letter that Rabbi Weinberg submitted. And the comments that the Rebbe made were, Number one, uh, that the Rebbe reiterates, if they keep the laws of family purity, of Tara Samashbacha, they will be blessed with a child. And I want to just uh, explain this first point. The first point the Rebbe is saying is that the Torah is absolutely true. When one does what they are meant to do, and you have the insight, uh, and uh, you can say maybe the foresight of a tzaddik who can see which channels of blessing are open to a person, um, and they tell you, if you follow these laws, then you will be blessed, then that remains absolutely true. So the Rebbe emphasized, follow the laws of family purity and you'll be blessed. And then the Rebbe said point number two, because they would obviously have a question, we did do that. Point number two is, it uh, could have happened because you didn't fully keep the laws of family purity. That you, you know, you studied them, you believed you were following them, but maybe there was a mistake somewhere because there are a lot of details when it comes to this particular mitzvah, as, um, as some other mitzvahs also have. And you may be, uh, you know, faltering in a certain area, which you don't realize. So the Rebbe was adamant that you must be faltering somewhere. That's a strong possibility. And then the Rebbe gave a third point, and the third point was a point of great encouragement, where the Rebbe said that you should know that many Jews... Amongst them, great Jewish leaders were born only after a miscarriage. So the Rebbe is just insinuating that, you know, maybe the way of, uh, that this is the ways of God, 
that uh, you know you are going to be blessed with a very special child who's blessed with a very uh, special soul. And maybe that's the reason why the miscarriage is happening. So don't just uh, don't uh, get overwhelmed by the miscarriage. Number four, point number four the Rebbe made is possibly one or both of you, meaning referring to the woman and her husband, regretted having followed the laws of family purity once you became pregnant. You know, sometimes when we are waiting for a blessing from God, and God blesses us, and we see the blessing coming to fruition, we suddenly think, feel like we achieved this blessing on our own. Oh, God, never mind, we don't need your help anymore. And so maybe that's what happened. One of you regretted putting all that effort in because you became pregnant anyway forgetting that the blessing came through living according to the instructions of Almighty God. And then last point, point number five, the Rebbe said to them that the couple forgot about God, who is the source of all blessing, and they are believing that the source of their bracha, of their blessing, is from a person, which person, the Rebbe writes, be, me, that they think I'm the one who's blessing them and, and I'm the one who's giving them the child. No, 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 no. When I say a blessing, I'm only conveying the blessing of God. Only God has the power to uh, give someone who is childless a child. And this was um, the, the very, very insightful letter that the Lubavitcher Rebbe sent to this couple. What's fascinating is that here we are right before Rosh Hashanah. And on Rosh Hashanah, we mention three women. Um, we, we read in the Torah about our matriarch, Sarah, Sarah, who did not have any children. She told her husband, Avraham, Abraham, to live with their maidservant, hug her, and have a child through her because I can't have children. She couldn't imagine that she'd be able to have a child, although she was then uh, very surprisingly blessed with have, giving birth to her son, Yitzchak, Isaac, the second of our, of our forefathers, when she was 90 years old. Now, Sarah, what did she do when she didn't have children? She saw she wasn't having children. She told her husband, why should you be, be deprived of children to have a child with our maidservant? Um, which which um, Avram did. She didn't, the Torah doesn't mention to us that she actually prayed to God for a child. A second person we mention in the second, on the second day of Rosh Hashanah in the Haftorah is Rachel, Rachel, our matriarch, Rachel, our fourth matriarch, <clears throat> or our third matriarch, um, Rachel, and Rachel um, um, d d couldn't have any children. Her sister, her, well, you may remember her sister Leah, was, uh, had numerous children and she wasn't having any children. And she came to her husband and she said, Havali banim, give me children. And she basically told her husband, Yaakov, Jacob, pray for me. Pray for me to God, so I will have children too. So she herself also did not pray to Hashem, but she did ask her husband to pray for her, and in fact he did, and she ended up having two sons. The third person, we, uh, the woman we read about, uh, we mention on Rosh Hashanah, is Hannah. Hannah, who lived much later than Sarah and uh, Rachel, um, Hannah was a righteous woman, and she did not have any children as well. And, the, and, the, uh, and this, is, this is already in the books of the prophets, outside of the five books of Moses, of Hamish HaChemish Torah, where Hana, the, Torah, the Tanakh tells us, Vatispalel el Hashem uvachai sifke. She prayed to God and she cried out to God. That Hana herself actually did cry out to God. And what we see from these three different um, um, great Jewish women, we see that there were three different approaches and sort of an increasing of understanding of how an individual can approach God. Sarah didn't even uh, pray to God. She didn't have a model to show her to do that. And she didn't do that, although God ended up blessing her regardless. Rachel understood already that we should pray to God but she maybe felt she was inadequate and she asked her husband to pray for her. Chana already understood that every single Jew has a unique personal relationship with God. And that every single person, when we need something, we ourselves should pray to God. And this is an expression of a verse that we read in this week's Torah portion right before 
uh, Rosh Hashanah every single year. Ki karov elecha hadover ma'od beficho uvovav chalasoso. That the matter is very close to you. The reason why everything is so close within reach of us, everything is so close to us, is because we are so close to God. And God only wants to hear from us. So I'd like to bless you as we approach the new year that you be written and inscribed and sealed for a year of excellent health, of tremendous Yiddish and Achas, Jewish satisfaction from your children, that you are blessed with material abundance that you can use for the purposes God is giving them to you for, and that you remember as you stand in synagogue on Rosh Hashanah, and as you hear the shofar, which is the most important thing to do on Rosh Hashanah, that God is sitting there waiting for you to speak to him. There's nothing more that he cherishes, and there's nothing more that he would desire than to fulfill your wishes. Shana Tovah.